I've been known to do a few whole hog cooks. Matter of fact, I used to raise hogs. And back in the 90s, we cooked whole hogs quite a bit, had a big party to where, to where everybody come over and eat all this meat, because it was a lot of meat. But if you don't want to do a whole hog, but want to have something real similar to that, then I'm going to show you what we do. And we do it with a picnic shoulder, part of the, the pig right here. It's right below the Boston butt on a pig, and it usually comes with a skin on, so you're also getting that crispy crackling. And uh, we're doing it Carolina style, where we're chopping the meat. We're gonna get started right now. All right, this is our picnic shoulder, skin on. This is uh, nine and a half pounds. And we're gonna start off by just taking some plain yellow mustard. I always use mustard as a binder on pork. You don't want none on your skin, right? Just yeah. the meat? I don't even season the skin. Derek does this quite a bit and he's gotten pretty good at it. And uh, back when we used to do the whole hogs, man, we would we'd really crisp up that skin, man. That was one of the best parts. That is cracklings, baby. Now this is a homemade seasoning that I made. Uh, if y'all look down in the description box, I will have a description down there of how to make it if you want to make it. If not, use your favorite barbecue rub. Since this is Carolina style, I make my own because I want the red pepper flakes in there. All right, we're ready for the smoker, huh? Yep. All right, and on to the Lone Star. All set, we go. All right, you're running blackjack oak on this, running right? Running blackjack oak, and from time to time, I will be rotating this thing around as we're mopping it. We will not put our first mop on to about an hour and a half, an hour to an hour and a half. We want that seasoning to sit up before we start mopping it. I've had a lot of people ask me over the years where they could purchase the hats like I wear in my videos and I've never been able to offer them, not, not up to now, but I can now. And a lot of people show a lot of interest in these mossy oak cats and real tree hats. I've got this one here, they're black. Got beanie caps. Here's another beanie that Randy Shifter sent me. If you don't know Randy, I'll have a link in the description. He just started a YouTube channel as well. So the thing is, you'll have to go through Lance. Lance has Sleeper Barbecue YouTube channel, and he also does embroidery work, and he does a really good job with it. So if you want one of my hats, or if you want your own hat with your own logo, I'll have Lance's contact email in the description of this video. All right, we're gonna start on this Carolina style mop sauce. You wanna start with some Texas paint. This one's 12 fluid ounces. All right, so you got the whole bottle of Texas Pete going in. Whole bottle of Texas Pete. Now our next step, I'm using white distilled vinegar because it's a lot cheaper. You can use apple cider vinegar. Sometimes I do both, but I cannot tell the difference. So with today's economy, go cheaper, right? So we're gonna put in one cup and another half. Go ahead and turn on the flames. I'm gonna put it up pretty high right this moment. I wanna get this water boiling and then we'll bring it down to a simmer. And what I got in here, use your favorite barbecue rub. You wanna add some cayenne pepper and red pepper flakes if you're looking for a little bit of heat. But a Carolina style sauce always has red pepper flakes. How much of that you go in with? Just to your own preference. Your own preference. Okay. And the recipe to the barbecue rub that I'm using here is mine, and it will be down in the description box for the recipe. We're just gonna take this mixture that I made, our Carolina sauce, we're gonna bring it to a bowl and drop it down to a simmer for a little bit. Basically what we're doing is just dissolving the seasonings into the liquid mixture. All right, 
Alrighty, we are ready to start saucing this meat. As you can see, the seasoning is here very well. Just take your mop, start mopping over. Yeah, buddy. And as y'all can see there, we got some boudin that I made last week. We just decided to throw that on the smoker so we have a little something to nibble on. I actually stuffed them with lamb casings or sheep casings. Boy, it's a pretty mopping sauce on there, ain't it? Yes, sir, it is. It's a beautiful color. So how often you gonna do that? At this point, I will be doing about every 30 to 45 minutes till, okay. the, till we pull her off. All right, then. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, yeah. Man, look at the color on that. We are getting ready to put this in a pan and cover it with foil, but before we do that, I want to do a little probe just to see where we're at. Eh, about 131 deep in the middle there. That's all right. I really don't want to get much more color than what we got right here. About 130, about 131. So we're going to let it finish off in this wrap right here. Go ahead, Derek. Now I always use a pan just because I know I'm going to be shredding this or chopping it later. In this case, chopping it. You already got your pan there, but if you was doing pulled pork, your pan is already there for you. You ain't got to worry about pulling it and transferring it to yeah, something. That's a good idea. Even though we'll be chopping, so it'll have to come out of there. Plus we, plus, we got to get that skin crispy a little later on. Oh, yeah. Put her back in and let her go. We're running about, what, 275 most of the day? Running about 275. I will knock it up to about 300 now that we're wrapped and uh, let it go till she's probing tender. And that could be anywhere between 190 and 205, 210. Yeah, we just have to check it. Close the lid because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Hey, if you're looking for a really good and reliable thermometer, that won't break the bank, then check out Thermapro. I'll have links in the description box with a discount. Just pulling it off the smoker. Ooh, smells good. Ooh, that smells good. Yes, sir, it does. Man, look at all that juice. Yeah. All right, we're going to pick this thing up out of here and just set it directly onto this cutting board. Ooh, that juice is hot. All right, so what we got to do is try to blot off as much of this as we can on this skin. Oh yeah, that's going through good. Remember, this is going to be chopped, but I want to take and poke a few holes in here. That's just to let any fat render out of the skin. Oh, we're fixing to crisp that right up. You take salt. I'm just using kosher salt. You can use any salt. And that salt is gonna help pull some of that moisture out of there. All right, so we're just going to get in here and just kind of peel this apart. Got the bone out, huh? Yep. Here's oh, there it is. The biggest piece. Okay. We're just going to take all this here and take our cleaver. Took and put all that chopped meat over into this. All right, so the skin turned out pretty good. We got a little bit of char right in here. I might not use this little bit right here, but the rest of this I'm using. That's looking good. Just gonna bust that up. This is gonna go into this meat right here. All right, so I'm gonna get the rest of this done. We're gonna put it in with the meat and we'll bring you right back. 
I'll tell you one thing, them cracklings are on point, man. All right, we got our cracklings mixed in with our meat. And what I'm gonna do here is go back with some of the seasoning that we originally put on the outside of this pork earlier. And just kind of incorporate it all in throughout this meat. Put a good layer there and just start mixing it in. Ooh, man, those things are good. Good. Oh. Add another little layer. I don't want to go too much. We don't want to overpower it. We still want to taste the pork. One well, thing about it, man, when you cook those cracklings right off the pig itself, or in this case, the pig neck, mm -hmm. it don't get no fresher than that. Oh, no. Now, there's better ways to do cracklings, I guarantee you. Oh, of course. But, uh, hey, you got the grill already fired up. You know, just do what you can with it. All right, our next step is I'm gonna hold with the seasoning right there. Like I said, I don't wanna overpower it. I'm gonna take some more of my sauce here and I'm just gonna use my mop to kind of drizzle it and baste it down in there some and that ain't working too well. Yeah, just pour your line Let through there. pour it down through here. Now you don't wanna go crazy with this. All it's supposed to do is enhance the flavor. You can always power. add it on the individual sandwiches Correct. too as you make them. Correct. All right, my mouth is officially watering now. We'll be back in just a few minutes and we're going to give you a taste. Man, I can smell that. That looks delicious. I just can't wait to eat that. Come on, Derek, let's do it. Woo, woo. Now, I've got that packed pretty good. <sighs> We've done this before. We actually do it quite often, so I know it's already good, but we're gonna do an official taste. You ready? That's all right. Mmm. 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 Mm. I tell you, I like a lot of different styles of barbecue, but that Carolina style has got to be one of my favorites. Yes, got to be. It's yeah. just, I love a vinegary tang and that, that background, a little bit of heat. Got to love it. I make, I make that or s something similar in that tang. It might be a picnic one week, might be a pork buck the next week, but I do it about once a week around here. <laughs> yeah, it was about a year ago we did the Carolina off cuts. Yeah, I remember. With the uh, shanks and everything. Yeah. Yep. Really good barbecue. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'm Russ Jones. I'm Derek Jones. We are Smoky Riz Barbecue.